This does not count as a crash. That does not count as a crash. Thanks for tuning in. This is Stomper Be Thompin' and here we are at round 13 at a race called Rattlesnake in Rural Retreat, Virginia, held at a raceway called Wythe Raceway. So check them out. So it's obviously a big uh, dirt oval track. So this, this race has a little bit of everything here. And I'll be honest, this might be my most favorite course we've ever done. Just the conditions, the track variety and everything, it was an absolute blast. I love tight woods. I know there's a lot of people who wish hair scrambles were tight again, whatever. Um, yeah, tight woods are fun. They're challenging, they're technical. That, that's a blast, but I also love motocross. I'm terrible at it, but I love it. I also just love kind of cruising slow with my friends. So I like all kinds of riding, but this race in particular just fully pegged the fun meter for me. So right here, I'm just rooting on east, and he uh, he had a great start in the four-stroke line. But yeah, this track was awesome. It was fast and wide open. There was a lot of room for passing, and you're just really able to hammer down on the throttle. But it also had a few tight sections in there too, so it was a good mix overall. So the start of the race here, we're on the infield of this racetrack. And we're on it for quite a bit, which is actually pretty good because it gave a lot of a lot of folks the opportunity to kind of spread out before we all dove into the woods. So here I am battling with Randall Ellis towards the back of the pack. I've never actually worked on starts, just because it doesn't really matter for me too much. But I don't know, maybe I'll start working on those next. This is a cool start to the race, that's for sure. So this video is a little bit longer than most, uh, just because I had, or I finally got all four laps in for this race. But I also had a lot of great moments where I was riding right behind people, so I try to include footage of that. And of course, I cut out the more boring sections and uh, sections where I'm kind of all by myself. But yeah, I got in all four laps. I think I've only... I can't remember if this is my first time where I stayed on the lead lap the whole race. Or if I've done that in the past. Yeah, coming up here, I took the right side line. That was not the right line to take there. The remaining laps to take the left-hand side. Yeah, no major issues with arm pump or anything. I guess you're not really gonna get that on a track like this where it's mostly fast and wide open. But it did, again, it did have a couple tight sections and uh, I got some footage of that in here soon some proper single track. Oh, poor Joe. So that's Joe Overstreet. He's in my class. Right here at the beginning of lap one, his bike's obviously at a, in an awkward spot there. So I talked to him after the race and he showed me the video. He was hauling up that hill and I guess his front tire caught a root and just slipped out underneath him, washed out, and he ended up colliding with a tree. It, it totally smashed his goggles and it cracked the foam inside of his helmet too. So he actually picked up his bike and then put in really respectable lap times right after that. So he was not far behind me after picking up his bike here the remainder of the race. So glad you're okay, Joe. That was uh, That's a gnarly hit when you come out of it like that with all that broken gear. But uh, the only time I've ever raced Rattlesnack at what uh, Rattlesnack, <laughs> 
Rattlesnake at White Raceway was last year, and it was a total mud fest. If you if you've raced it, you, you know it was a completely different track. Well, one, we went the opposite direction, but two, it was just pure mud. So that just makes for a totally different track. You you just don't get the same feel for it. So this was the the conditions were perfect. The uh, VCHSS did a great job. Um, watering down the kind of the infield there to keep the dust down a bit but underneath the trees here it was really nice no dust just a little bit of roost yeah so here's one of the uphill climbs nice and wide as you can see and uh, if you if you don't know if you're new to watching these videos of mine I'm coming off a 2022 KTM 300 XCW which is a fantastic motorcycle. I absolutely love it. Two-stroke enduro bike, wide ratio transmission, and ultra plush suspension, which is perfect for sections just like this right here. And you can see I'm kind of having a hard time. So now I'm on a 2023 KTM 350 XCF, their four-stroke kind of cross-country bike. Stiffer suspension, and obviously it's a four-stroke. So those high compression four strokes got a so much snap off the bottom and so much torque. It's taken me a little bit to get used to, but I think I stalled it once on the first lap, just very briefly, and then I don't stall it again till the third lap. So I've gotten a lot better at just not stalling the motorcycle. So that's been a big relief. Not that there's you know, six or seven miles of tight technical. But yeah, this track is much more conducive to this bike. I was able to push it way harder. I had a lot more confidence jumping. And in fact, as you saw in my intro, it's, it might be hard to tell, but I definitely overshot a couple of jumps and undershot too. I, like I cased the double, which I, was able to ride out of but just gives me a lot more confidence jumping because I know that that landing is going to be a little bit more stable. So I pull over let a few folks by here. That was Josh. Zach Swanson, he's in my class. He had a great race and then he kind of disappears from me here but then I ended up seeing him on the fourth lap uh, in the infield so we're like he's going one direction while I'm going the other so it's one of those things where you can see each other out of the corner of your eye but I never I never had enough in the tank to, to fully catch him yeah this little spot was tricky I don't think I ever hit that clean and fast I did cut my bars finally before this race I only took maybe, it ended up being just a hair over an inch off total. So I might take off a tiny bit more. But yeah, I finally cut my bars. So I heard someone coming up and that was Wesley. He's in my class, more on him in a bit. But right here, you can't see him, but Randall, um, we were neck and neck there at the beginning of the race. Randall came up and we were trading paint a little bit right there. So I think he got caught up, tripped up right there. But yeah, so Wesley just passed me. He's in my class as well, 27J. Uh, and we have, he and I have a great back and forth here on this like first and second lap. I got a lot of that footage. And then we see each other again on the fourth lap, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, this turn was sick. Coming in there, just like put a little bit of the rear brake on, slide it around as you're coming down the hill. That, that felt so cool. But it's sections like this where that XCW super plush suspension was just no bueno. Because you're bottoming out on these just little washouts. There are little whoop sections. Those weren't even really whoops, but yeah, I can just push this a lot harder some of these nice uphill climbs this was a really good one so lap one feeling really good no arm pump I could feel it coming out just a little bit but 
nothing like the other the previous you know, couple races I could have ridden all day flattened out for a section goes right back into some more uphill we got really lucky with the weather the track conditions were perfect the weather was perfect now you, you can notice the sun well not right here but throughout the race you'll notice the sun the camera picks it up and just kind of washes out the camera that's how it looked uh, you know just riding I had clear lens goggles on but the visor only did so much because the sun's just so low in the sky yeah <laughs> flat landed that one pretty nicely this was a really cool portion of the track uh, kind of like a just a just a fast flowy section almost like a a miniature kind of motocross track through the woods plenty of space to pass lots of fun jumps and turns and some of the jump faces were a little bit steep so I come up short on that one then the next lap I, I hit it perfect on the down on the landing and then the next two laps I way overshoot it even though I knew it was coming yeah, normally I'm uh, I'm short on jumps because I kind of chicken out. Not I'm never usually flying over the landing like that. But yeah, I'll talk about those as they come up. But yeah, this was probably my my favorite part of the track. I just I just love this flying through the woods, riding hard. Some small jumps you can wheelie them, you can jump them, whatever you want to do. This is a nice pass on the outside. Nice pass. But I placed pretty good. I, I placed kind of where I normally do in my class, but there's a lot of fast guys in my class. But overall, I think I did, uh, I had a slight improvement. So I think that's Wesley up ahead of the dude in the orange helmet there. So I've been able to keep him close. And he and I just have a great battle coming up here. I was just saying that's it Wes yeah baby because watching him like slide into the woods like that that's it's good he's fast letting another one by and Wesley's really fast through the woods too he's just smooth so he'd kind of pull away from me a little bit in spots it was tough to tough to keep him close And that Yamaha he's on is no slouch. That thing's, it's got some power. And it puts it down really good too. So lap one's almost in the books here. Just following west through the finish. Feeling good. I think I had that again. I think I had that one tiny little stall. No crashes or anything. No arm bump to worry about. And now I got a now I got a really good feel for the course too, so I know where the sketchy spots are. I know where some of the bad lines are, some of the good lines. So I, I kept a lot of this portion in here just because I was trying to pass Wesley here. Like, really hard, but like I said, he's quick and uh, you know, because of all these turns, there's only so fast that he can actually go. So it was really tough to try and make a proper pass. Like right here. 
accelerate right into a hard break. Yeah. So I'm amped, right? Like, I'm amped, he's amped. I'm trying to make a pass. He's trying to keep me from passing, I'm sure. Sending the roost my way. So I couldn't, I could not make a pass on that whole infield section as we're finishing up here, but I'm right on his tail. But then there's this one person ahead of us and he, Wesley goes up high on the track. So I'm like, okay, I'll stay down low. And it ended up working out for me. Cause right here I can just throttle down. So I was able to squeeze in ahead of them, but then you gotta kinda really get, get on the brakes hard. And now you're diving back into the woods. So it, it's hard to explain. Like my adrenaline was pumping, not just cause I'm out there riding, having a blast, but because I was racing with Wesley, that whole infield portion, we were tire to tire in spots. And I'm looking for passes and I'm getting on the brakes hard. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm the, I'm terrible at flat track riding. You know, I just, hammer down the throttle hammer on the brakes but uh but then wesley gets me right here so i hesitate right there i know you're never supposed to follow someone right if they take the left line take the right line and i should have done that but i had it in my head that the left line was the better line so i follow this person up through the woods and wesley ends up taking the correct path which is the path that neither of us went down and he was able to get the pass so I think he, I, don't, I think I don't see him again until lap four, give or take. So that was cool. It was nice of him to let me by. I appreciate that. I, I rarely ever call out to pass like with an engine rev or a woo-woo or anything. I just try and pass people. Especially on a course like this, there's tons of room. I'm also not competing, you know, for like top three in my class or anything. So, you know, I'm just out there mostly having fun, bringing up the rear. <laughs> but I get tucked in behind this person and ride behind them for quite a while. few ruts in some of these uphills too which again allows you to really just crack open the throttle let her eat these trails are so nice conditions were great i think i ran about 12 in the front psi and i think i did about eight or nine in the rear just because i remembered some of the tougher sloppy hill climbs so i wanted that lower pressure to really give, give me some grip. I am running tubeless though. So nice downhill with some braking bumps. He essentially just let me pass right there. Appreciate that. And it was a little bit wet down here next to the creek and in the shade, but not bad, not bad at all. You still have plenty of grip. I'm running the stock tires on this bike, which is a Dunlop AT81 rear. That's a decent rear tire. And then I've got the, uh, oh, what is it? I think it's the Dunlop MX33 front tire. I'm really, really liking that front tire. It's good in ruts, it's good in the open grass track. I've had it in some slop and it's been pretty good there too. Just all around a great tire. Also, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I've only run three tires so far. The AT81 front, which was okay, but it had a tendency to climb out of ruts, which even I could notice that at my beginner experience level. And then I switched to the Bridgestone M59, which helped with that a lot. 
So I would totally use the M59 again, but I'm a big fan of this 33 so far, so I think I'll just stick with those. Nice little off camber through the shade here, and there's that sun you see peeking through the trees. It definitely made visibility tough in certain directions. Like there's a couple hill climbs that are into the sun. This was such a good one. This that that portion right there got real slick too. I think like the fourth lap, it was all just kind of slate rock underneath it. So it's essentially like a mud face. Oh yeah, we get. Uh, so she gets the inside pass on me there, and I think we get all we all get caught up here pretty good. This is lap two, one of the tighter sections. There's you can see there's little to no room to pass. So if someone gets hung up, it's bad. Great job balancing right there. She caught the bike. I think it's up here in a bit. So she's following right behind him, but I think he spills right there. So she has to drop down into this soft outer edge of the trail. So she gets hung up on that down slope. Man, that's a tough spot to climb out of. I had no choice really but to wait because there was a good chance I would have done the same thing. Just getting myself in trouble right there. And that, then that zaps your energy. It takes forever to get out of those things sometimes. But back to the fast fluid motocross portions here. Uh, maybe not quite yet. We're getting there though. This is why this course was so much fun for me. Again, I understand that this is not the most technical riding. But when it just comes to pure fun. This, this might have been the most fun I've had on, on a dirty bike. I really enjoy this exact style of riding. Had to keep this in here. These long climbs are just so much fun. Levels out to another, another uphill. Yeah, so I'm following him and we both blow through the corner. That's what I get for, for following someone, you know, with, you know, with your vision at least. Even if you're hauling behind somebody, you gotta pay attention to those signs. Kept this in here just because it was so pretty. Big pine tree forest, a bunch of mature Virginia pines. Back to that kind of mini motocross track in the woods. I'm trying to catch this person in red up here. That's the one and only time I landed on the landing of that jump. <laughs> Laps three and four, I, I land on the flat bottom. And I could feel the suspension compress all the way. So you can tell I'm having a hard time reeling them in here. Oh, 
Oh yeah, so this is where I case the double. So I wasn't even really looking at the signs. I did not see the black X up here. Oh, it's in a, it's in a few turns. The black X to indicate, hey, this is a for real double. Uh, I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but I don't see the black X and I just hit the jump anyways. Bit of a rough landing, but we're able to ride out of it. And I'm still riding in the white map for these 350s, the 2023 at least. The green map is definitely um, got way more snap to it, especially lower to mid RPM, which is great in certain conditions, but I don't know. I just need to go riding hard one day on the green map to see if I like it a little bit better. So the beginning of lap three, that was the second time I've stalled the bike and still no crashes. One of these races, I'm gonna ride hard and not have any crashes, we'll see. I just got a little bit of infield section right here. Get at least one pass. This was nice, you could kind of take a little break, so if you were suffering from some arm pump, help relieve it a little bit. So up here in the yellow jersey is uh, number seven P, Jeremy Brown. So at this point in time, Jeremy is running with a completely flat rear tire. So he had passed me at some point because he started in one of the lines behind me, I believe. So he passed me at some point and I was able to catch him on that open track. So he's in the, in the open, fast, kind of flat track on the indoor or on the uh, inside the racetrack there. I was able to catch him. But in the woods, he was still, still faster than me with the completely flat rear tire. But not only that, I talked to him right after the race too. He had, I don't know where, when in his race this happened, but he had a completely blown out rear shock. So he was still plenty faster than me through the woods with a flat tire and a totally blown out rear shock. He showed me too, the thing was bouncing all over the place. So kudos, Jeremy, that's uh, really impressive. You were able to ride that hard with all that going on. And it happened early for him too. I know he rode with a flat tire for at least two full laps. But yeah, he and I kind of catch up and trade places a few more times. I think he does end up finishing ahead of me though. This was my second favorite part of the track. Long uphill, these little jumps built in. Back into some tighter woods. Well, this is pretty open, but it gets tight a little bit here and there. Oh, bad line. That would have been much more challenging if it was wet and sloppy.
catching up to somebody here. Gets tight up again, right here. It gets tight up here again. But just let me go there, appreciate that. Lap three was my fastest lap time by about 30 seconds. I was pretty consistent, except for my fourth and final lap because I had a couple. That's when I finally laid the bike down, I had a couple tiny wrecks. You'll see those. So those cost me, I don't know, at least 60 to 90 seconds. But yeah, this hill climb got challenging with all these riders on it. Because it got real slick. If you didn't hit that hill with, with momentum or if you're riding pretty high PSI I could see how you would uh, completely lose traction up that thing because I definitely spun the tire this tighter section yeah I still might shave off just a hair more I never thought about the bars while I was out there like I didn't really notice it um, I suppose looking back I could notice like a, the ever so slightest amount of reduced leverage in places but it wasn't enough for me to really think about it while I was riding so mostly unnoticeable again I only took off about an inch now from uh, from bar end to bar end including the hand guards that stick out a little farther I'm about 32 inches so I know a lot of people run much shorter than that. Yeah, that was a sweet pass. There's some uh, really fast guys who like to ride the trail rider class. So they'll usually catch up and pass me eventually. And that's where I overshoot it. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't too bad, but I still landed on the flat bottom. Probably a little bit hard to tell. I can only imagine what that landing would have been like on the XCW. Oh, that would have been bad. Save for when I case that little double. I think the stiff suspension allowed me to to ride that out a little bit. But then the fourth lap, I, I overshoot that jump even farther. Terrible. And that's remembering that I had to slow down a little bit. I was just too amped. So I think that's Jeremy Brown again. Here I am kind of catching him on the faster stuff again because he has far less stability at speed. And that when it's flat like that, it's kind of bouncing up and down in the stroke too. Very unbalanced. So here comes that little double, which I definitely go around, finally. <laughs> I probably could have hit it, but I'm not here riding, I'm here racing. So uh, it'd be fun to come here and just ride for a day, just to try things. Look at him wrangling that thing. 
Oh man. I've never raced with a flat rear tire before, so I don't really know what it's like. I imagine it's like racing in really sloppy mud or something, but just your rear. So lap four, here we go. Just saw the white flag. So this is where I catch Jeremy and, and uh, get a pass. But you can kind of see his tire bouncing right there. And I, yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm pointing it out, not really. I mean, I know he knows he's got a flat, but I'm just kind of acknowledging it. Like, dude, that's a bummer. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I know, I know. Just keep powering through. Uh, but my buddy, my, my buddy, my buddy Nate, I talked to him after. He said he's, he's had a couple races and Randall. Um, they've had a couple races where they've had flats and, I think Nate said the uh, having a flat front is way worse, which kind of makes sense. I mean, makes it must make corners next to next to impossible to carry any kind of speed through. Them. Yeah, nice pass right there. Right there, I should have wheelied over that ledge because it's kind of a drop off into the water. I don't know why I didn't. Ended up getting water in my boots. But there he goes. So I pass him on the track and he passes me back right there. He was still so fast through the woods. It was it started to get like funny. I'd pass him in the fast spots and then I knew he'd come up and creep right by me in the woods again. feeling good so at this point I don't think I'm ever gonna catch up to Wesley I thought he was just kind of gone ahead of me but there he is I caught him holy shnikes so now this gives me just a whole newfound you know it kind of refilled my cup of just energy and adrenaline like okay someone in my class let's go let's have a battle let's race I don't know if he could tell it was me behind him at this point. But I was stoked. I love the uh, the late battles late in the race against people in your class. Good times. But I'll ruin it for you. I never get around him because lap four is where I start having my silly little wrecks. There's Jeremy, he, got, he must have got caught up navigating those trees right there. But, oh! This is my first little hang up. I'm stalling out, I'm making people mad. <laughs> I say, dang it. Normally this bike yeah, sorry about that. Normally this bike fires up straight away, but you know, sometimes you know, it just doesn't fire straight away. So that happened. So I had passed her and then she had to pass me and then she let me by again. So I said, thanks. And then I do this on repeat. So this is like 10 seconds later. She just doesn't want to fire. So I'm like, okay, I got to let these people by. I'll lean up against this tree. Yeah, and she was saying sorry to me. No, 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 no. I'm the one who stalls out in the middle of the trail and is holding people up. This does not count as a crash. Yeah, so I had to get off the bike because the tree I decided to lean up against is dead. And watch this. <laughs> I'm going to pick up my bike and he just runs over my front tire. <laughs> what the heck? It looked like there was plenty of room, but I could be wrong. Maybe he had no choice but to hit it. But yeah, I'm not counting that one as, as like I'm thinking in my head. At this point, I'm not counting that as a crash. I'm not counting that as a crash. I purposefully leaned over to let people by. 
and the tree was dead, so it just fell over. And then dude runs over my tire and just pulls the bike out of my hands. Oh, uh, it was just more funny than anything. There was no damage done. Plus, it's racing. Don't crash if you don't want to get run over. No, I'm just kidding. So I'm just trying to keep it together, you know? Like, okay, it's a bummer. All those things happened. Like, the only chance I've got of catching Wesley now is, I don't know, if he ch stopped to, like, check some trap lines or something. There's no way. And I start stalling a little bit more. I still think I only stalled maybe six or seven times total, but most of those came on the fourth lap. And right here. Yeah. I'd hit that section perfectly before. Yeah, thanks for the tip. guy just said to drag the front down which like yeah it's I was kind of putting that together in my head as he was saying it too like yeah that's gonna be way easier way overshoot that <laughs> but yeah that little slip up I had back there I was just I, I could feel the people behind me so I was pushing it a little bit harder than I should have I'd hit that section clean and fast for me a few times already but for whatever reason I just slipped up oh yeah another observation I had was um, I didn't have arm pump but by the fourth lap I was starting to get fatigued I actually had some just I guess like my hands were fatiguing a little bit they weren't sore or numb nothing like that it wasn't like a vibration thing just from pulling the levers all day constantly riding them But we finish up lap four here and had one of the best races of my life. Woo! Thanks for watching, everybody.